Good morning. This will be an introduction to using the field command, not inside a table at this point, but with the goal of eventually linking out some data from the textual database that really is underneath AutoCAD to an engine like Google Docs spreadsheets or Microsoft Office spreadsheets or numbers in Apple, whatever you may have at your disposal. So I'm going to just draft up a 100-foot tower here, we'll put it on the layer object. Tried this before with a dynamic on, so I'm going to try it with a dynamic off. Line from the point 0, 0 to the point 0, 100. Zoom E. Now you see nothing's there, which means I had actually done it correct before, but why is nothing there? Because I have my layers not turned on. So once again, remembering quite often, to, immediately if you have problems, this is to thaw and turn everything on. I'm going to erase out the box that is kind of left over. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. Type LA for layer or minus LA. I'm going to make a new one. And I'm going to be calling it force a force. Okay, And I'll go ahead and give that a color of cyan and I will set it current. Like many things, if this is set up earlier in the standard way, it becomes a lot easier. So I have done that. I've set my layer current. I can close that out. And I'm just going to arbitrarily right now draw a force that is a cable. So it's going to be pulling from there. And we'll talk about the rule of transmissibility later. I'm going to draft from the end point there. And that is, I'm going to have that pulling there down in that direction. And for now, since we there's, there is not a good line and a line terminator command in AutoCAD, I'm just going to do a little line. I'm sorry, I'm going to do a little circle. This would be a good use of a block, a little circle on the end there so we can remember where it is. Okay, so that's the force. And if we have to remember that the force is emanating from there or it is applied right there, and we're interested in now the moment from at the base at the moment, at the base of the um, of the structure, what is the moment that is applied by that force? And if you remember about the definition of moment, it's many things, force times orthogonal distance. So one thing we might be interested in is, you know, drawing a, I'll put it on the center line, a, a line from the end of this perpendicular to that. And it would be this force times that distance would be the one definition of the moment, and that's a good one. You could actually break this force right here into two components, one going this way and one going down. The one going down has no moment arm because it goes through our point of rotation. And the one going over has um, a moment arm equal to the, the y value of this structure, or 100. But we want to get good at using the pure math, since we're going to be using these computational engines. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a new layer, call it radial vector, or the, the radial vector. So I'm going to go ahead and say this time minus LA, N for new, radial underscore vector, C for color, yellow, radial underscore vector, and I did the same thing, just so you know. Now if I say LA for layer, there's a layer here called radial vector. I'll make it current. And essentially the radial vector is the same as this object, but I'm going to go ahead and draft it anyway, line from the end of this to the point of application of the force, the tail, basically. And so now I'm going to go ahead and freeze up a couple of layers. I'm just going to leave around what is, in fact, the radial arm and the force vector. So I'm going to go ahead and remember that we can go ahead and freeze that layer. And unfortunately, I can't freeze the one underneath, but I can say LA for layer. Go to object and freeze that one as well. So again, layer management and all that stuff becomes really important. I'm going to now make one last layer here. I'm going to call it minus layer, new text, color, green, 
text for the color and set text. Now, we're not going to spend some time right now on um, formatting text, but if you remember, the key to text is style. That style sets the key to the text, and in this case, we're using the dimension style. We're not using annotative, which is good. We've got no height set, so we can set that up later. And so I'm going to hit set current here, close. And the best way to set your text height is to just do detext. And in this case, it's, we'll make it 20. We might want to make it, I don't know, 50 high. This all has to do with scale. We're going to do a start point here, and we're going to make it 50 high. And rotation 0. And then we're just going to say this is the text. And we know that 50 isn't any good, so we're going to change that a little bit. And the reason why we're doing that, we're trying to set the text up um, for input in the field command. So this time, I guess 20 was actually OK. I'm going to erase D text start point there, height of 20, and rotation there. This is text. All right, now I can erase out that text because really I wanted to just get it established. It's still a little bit large. And what I want to do now is use the field command. And the field command is going to give me the x, y, and z components of the force and the x, y, z components of the, I'm sorry, of the radial vector and the x, y, and z components of the force vector. And we're going to put them and stack them. Um, we're going to want them in standard engineering notation, which is what AutoCAD will give us. So let's see how this field command works. The command is field. Usually you're doing it for an object. You select the object type, and it's going to vary greatly. In this case, what we're interested in is the delta, the change, not the anything else individually, the change. And we're going to want it in x, y, and z, comma separated. We're going to want it in for all intents and purposes right now, we'll go ahead with decimal units. And we're going to hit OK. And you see it went right there. We want to label that. And the i, j, and k are actually um, implied. This is the radial vector. And now if we do the field, f-i-e-l-d, once again for an object, this time for the force vector. And you're going to need to remember what scale you've drafted these things at. There will be times that you're going to want to draft things not at 1 to 1, but at 1 to 10 or at 1 to 100, um, just so you can visually appreciate and do the work in AutoCAD, which becomes, for many of you, soon your preferred engineering um, simple problem solving engine. Once again, delta. OK, and you see now we have the force vector right here. Why do all this? Here's why. If we wanted to get the basic dot product, we could multiply these two together and these two together and these two together. If we want to do the cross product, we could stack up i, j, and k. We could do the calculation in a spreadsheet quite easily, quite nicely in our calculators very straightforward for this force. But then let's say the force changed. Just by typing a regen, this changed. For some reason, I don't know why it would occur, but let's say the application of the point of force changed. Well, I'm going to make it to the midpoint. Notice here, nothing changes until I, of course, change then the radial vector and type region. And you see there, that is why we learn to do vector calculations. And this goes on big time in 2D and 3D. The spreadsheet link is something we'll have some of you work on. But AutoCAD tables will do this with calculations as well. You immediately have a calculation of the moment at a, of that force about a point zero zero. Thanks for listening. Give that a try. Think and brainstorm where you've used this before.
for in other programs like Civil 3D, but more importantly, how you can use it now to make your computations a lot more repeatable and uh, true. Thanks for listening.